I want to greet you and welcome you this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So good to be here this morning and to be able to share the Word of God with you again. As South Africa prepares itself to celebrate another Heritage Day, we are indeed a privileged people because we get the opportunity to lock arms with people from so many backgrounds and so many walks of life and so many varieties of people. Amen? But how many of you know when it comes to serving God, we all come together as one? Amen. So it doesn't matter who we were before we met Jesus. Uh, all that matters is that he is God. So yes, it's uh, South Africa's cultural month. But this morning I have a question for you. Do you like what you see? Do you like what you see? So you know, amongst all of the celebrations and amongst everything that we're doing, do you like what you see? And yes, there is a very beady-eyed insect that is looking at you and asking you if you like what you see. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 13, and we're going to read from verses 27 through to 23, and then we're going to look at what we see. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jubasites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw are men of great stature. Verse 33. There we saw the giants, the descendants of an ark, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And we were so in their sight. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Do you like what you see? This is the nation of Israel as God had moved them out of Egypt. You must remember that God had performed many signs and miracles as he divinely shifted them out of slavery. So there were many great things that God did. And how many of you know when it came to them moving out of Egypt, God fought for them? The Bible does not tell me that any one of them lifted a sword. The Bible does not tell me that any one of them had to go and train for war. The Bible says to me, God miraculously brought them out of Egypt. Where they should have fought, where they should have struggled, where there should have been bloodshed both on their side and the Egyptian side. But God spared them a fight and brought them out because he fought for them. And here we have them now. And they've sent their spies out to go and spy the land which God had commanded them to possess. How many of you know God commanded them to possess the land? And so they go across. They spy out the land. And they come back. And this is what they have to say. The land truly flows with milk and honey. I like that. How many of you want your land to truly flow with milk and honey. How many of you are tired of the experience you've had in the wilderness? How many of you are tired of even the 
slavery that you encountered in Egypt. And here's a land that flows with milk and honey. Not only does it flow with milk and honey, but it is a land that is fruitful. How many of you know God desires to move you into a land that flows with milk and honey and a land that is fruitful? I want to remind you that you've not been called to live a fruitless existence. And you've not been called to labor the way you do. Sin has brought you into this place where you have to labor for what you desire. But this God that I serve, hmm, he wants to bring you into a land that flows with milk and honey and a land that is fruitful. Verse 32 says, they gave the children of Israel a bad report. And I find that challenging. I asked you in my question, before we started reading, I asked you, do you like what you see? And you know, the truth of the matter is, as we look at milk and honey and fruitfulness, and as we look towards grabbing a hold of a place where there's milk and honey flowing, and a place that is fruitful, be careful of those that will give you a bad report. I, I want to rebuke every bad report out of your environment. I, I want you to shift yourself and disassociate yourself from everyone that will give you a bad report. Everyone that says to you, South Africa's bad. I'm talking to you. Yeah, it's heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pointless. You dressed up today and you put the makeup on your face. You put your best Indian attire on but you talk negatively about the land that God has called you to possess. A land that flows with milk and honey and a land that is fruitful. I live in the same land as you. And I tell you this. I've lived under the apartheid regime and I came out after apartheid and I tell you this. This land flows with milk and honey and it is a land that is fruitful. The truth of the matter is, I like what I see. And you need to change how you look in order to see what God desires to give you. The problem is, there are negative people that want to speak a negative word about what God wants to do. The Bible says, they gave the children of Israel... I rebuke every adult that gives the children of this house a negative report. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I know there's issues. I know there's challenges. But let me remind you, it flows with milk and honey and we are fruitful here. But here we have 12 spies. We've got 10 that have a negative report, and we've got two that speak about what God shows them. You know, you're going to have to fight the majority when you want God to show up. And, and whilst we do not pick up our swords to fight, and whilst we do not pick up any guns and weapons to fight, but the fight that you have is against the bad report that's going to come from the majority. So the Bible says, they gave the children of Israel a bad report. How can you say it flows with milk and honey? How can you say it's fruitful? And the same mouth that's saying that gives a bad report. The Bible says that you need to make up your mind who you are. Don't sit on the fence. It is a bipolar church that finds itself in the land of milk and honey, in the land that is fruitful and saying it's bad. They go on to say that the land devours its inhabitants. Huh? So they say the land devours its inhabitants, and then in the same sentence they say, the men are of great stature. I don't know. I'm very confused now. 
And I rebuke every spirit of confusion that enters into the sound minds of the living children of God. Because you can't say it's devouring the inhabitants and in the same breath say, but the men are of great stature. It's either killing them or they're growing. Which is it? You cannot say that it is devouring the inhabitants and then also say, ah, but the people are big and they're great. In fact, in fact, watch this, right? Verse 28 says, the people who dwell in the land are strong, but it devours the inhabitants. There's a problem with the mentality of the child of God. There's a problem with a child of God that cannot see what God desires to do in their lives. They are looking for excuses. They dwell in the land, but they are being devoured. Huh. The cities are fortified and very large, but I thought you said that the land devours its inhabitants. You can't wake up one morning singing the praises of God and the next morning speaking about how the devil has taken everything from you. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy. Every morning you ought to wake up and praise God. Whether you made a million or whether you lost a million, it does not matter. Every morning you ought to praise God. Whether your child has been healed by God or whether you've received news that somebody in your home is sick, you ought to wake up praising God. You cannot get to this place where you have a bipolar speech that comes out of your mouth. The majority are speaking nonsense. When you start to dissect it, you start to see what's going on here. What is going on? The cities are fortified, very large. The people are strong, but the land is devouring the inhabitants. When I look at Harbor Lights, I see a people that are blessed. I see a people that even during a recession, you are opening businesses. I see a people that are buying new cars, buying houses, buying things that nobody else is doing. Why? And then you want to complain? Be careful. The Bible says this is where they are. The majority. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Oh, so now you saw some giants. You saw some giants, so now that's the problem. But let me remind you, verse 29 says there's Amalekites, there's Hittites, there's Jubicites, there's Amorites, there's Canaanites, there's a lot of ites. All living in a land that you are saying is devouring them? How come your neighbor is not being devoured, Harbalites? If you find yourself being devoured, if you find yourself in a place where you cannot survive in the current economy, I ask you, how come not everybody is having that problem? The Bible says that this is what's happening, right? Verse 33 says, there we saw the giants. I want you to know, Somebody is always going to be bigger than you. And I believe we've got some big boys here. But as big as some of the boys are here, I've seen some people that make you all look small. So let me tell you this. There's always going to be somebody bigger than you. But if you're focused on those that are looking bigger than you, be careful. Because you know what happens? You get challenged in how you think. The Bible says, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So nobody told them they're grasshoppers. Nobody told them they look like bugs. Nobody told them you look like a small insect. But when they looked at everything and when they saw the giants, when they saw them, they decided, we must be grasshoppers. What have you decided about yourself? When God has sent you out to go and take territory, when God has sent you out 
to take territory. What have you decided about yourself that has brought you to a place where you run with your tail between your legs? How many of our children are challenged? Not because of anything else, but because when they saw something, something entered their minds. And you know what we need when we see something that enters our minds that changes how we think about ourselves? The Bible says we need faith. And how does faith come? See, faith doesn't come by what you see. <laughs> you see, what you see corrupts the faith you carry. I, I got a lot of people, they want to activate faith for what they see. So they saw their brother buy a lucky car. Now their faith is, uh, 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 uh. you cannot activate faith by what you see. Faith is activated by what you, in fact, what you see is the antidote to faith. It is the killer of faith. You can come out of Egypt with God dropping everything in your sight to bring you out. He'll even open up the ocean and get you to cross over on dry ground. But even that will be nothing if you look at a giant. Imagine every step of faith you've taken so far in your life amounts to zero because you are fixated on a giant that you see now. You forget where you were. You forget what God's done already. The same God that has done it so far. He is faithful. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask, more than you can think of. But the problem is, you're looking and you see, ah, so, oh, hey, that oh, he got a good start in life because his father was rich. My father was a drunkard. Oh, oh, oh that, that lady, she's where she is. You know why? Because somebody put her in university. Oh, okay. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Huh. You've got to hear what the Word of God says for you. Because you know what the challenge with how you feel about yourself? And you know what the problem with how you see yourself? How you see yourself is contagious. Because your enemy will see you as you see yourself. This is what the Bible says. And so we were in whose sight? Their sight. In the sight of the giant, so they were. But they were not that until they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Your enemy will see you as you see yourself. If you, if you walk around like a victim, then everybody's going to see you like that. People will see you as you see yourself. I had to learn after growing up in apartheid that they will see me how I see me. If I see myself as a victim of apartheid, all these people are going to see me as a victim of apartheid. I have never sat in any boardroom in my life as a victim. But I didn't just go into the boardroom. I started on the shop floor. And so my mentality, even on the shop floor, was not a victim. The problem is, we have people that are blaming the giant. No, it's not the giant, it's you and how you see yourself. I know there are those that are stronger than you. I know there are those that are bigger than you. But the Bible tells me greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And it's high time you understood who is inside of you is bigger than anything you're ever going to see. And if you can get that revelation... If you can get that picture, nothing you will see will intimidate you. I am not saying you need to be arrogant. What I like is somebody that stays humble but knows that there is somebody that's greater inside of them. The same one that brought them out of Egypt. 
by miraculous signs and wonders. Can do it now even when you see giants in the land. Habalites, you carry greater. Your God, you sing that song. My God is greater. Really? Really? How about you stop singing the song? And how about you start living the song? The Bible says to me, they got a picture in their minds that they looked like grasshoppers. And that picture in their minds became visible to the giants. The giants can see what's going on in your head. Your enemy can see your thought processes and your thought patterns. And it is those thought processes and thought patterns that are keeping you in a stronghold. If you can't get a job, then it's time you shifted from employee status to employer. Because my God has not called you to be the tail. He's called you to be the head. It is time you understood where the problem is. The problem is, these eyes look at Facebook and see the diamond lifestyles. It looks at Instagram and sees all the diamond lifestyles. And, and, and faith does not come that way. I told you already, what you see works against faith. The Bible says you walk by and not by. Okay, there's a good reason why the Bible puts it that way. Because what you see works against your faith. It's time you open up your ears to hear what God is saying. So the Bible says, and we were in their sight. Verse number 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses. I need a Caleb that will silence the naysayers. I, I need a Caleb. That will stand up and make those in your environment a sin. Those that would speak against what God wants to do in your life. Those that would take you into a place of 40 years of wilderness. I pray a Caleb would come into your life and silence them. And silence them quickly. The problem is, even Caleb could not silence these people. But I pray for a strong Caleb and I pray for a strong Joshua to arise and would silence the naysayers. Keep their mouths quiet. The problem is, the more they speak, the more you're going to step into 40 years in the wilderness. Imagine, God says to his people, right? You know why he gives them 40 years in the wilderness? Because they spend 40 days spying out the land. And the Bible says to me, God says this to Moses, for every day they spent in that land, I'm going to put you one year in the wilderness. Now imagine this, because of a bad thought process, a bad thinking system in this head of yours, because you got the wrong ideas in here, for every day you, st you, 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 you visited the promised land, for every day you holidayed at the promised land, God's going to put you in the wilderness. You know why most of you are living in the wilderness? Because you went and visited the promised land as a holiday maker. And when you came back, you came back with a negative report about how you could never get there. And so what happens? God gives you a year for every day. And that's why you can ask my family and you can ask those that have traveled with us, before we leave our holiday, we close with Thanksgiving. Ask them. We'll sit around, we pray, we read the word, and we are grateful for what God has done. We don't walk away with negative words and negative reports. You know why? Because I do not want a holiday there, but a wilderness here. I don't need to go to the beachfront to live in milk and honey. When I go home, I got milk and honey. You know why? Because I don't pull negative words from my holiday. How come the same husband is so lovely at the beach? You know why he's so lovely at the beach and at home? Ah, he's like a gorilla. Why? 
Because you only got nice things to say there. When you are here, what you say? And the same thing goes for the flow. I'm getting there, bro. Give, it, give me a chance, Ikse. Give me a chance, Ikse. These wives. Ha! You know why your husband is like that? You know what? How come? How come? Same fro. Same fro. At the beach, she'll make you the coffee and bring it to your bedside. Same fro. At home, one, two thunders. <laughs> Wake up! The dog needs to be fed. How come? You know why? You live in a wilderness. You holiday at the beach. I came to tell you, the beach is a state of mind. I came to tell you, what you see there, be careful how you see yourself. I have visited many places. I've even worked in many places. The one thing God told me everywhere I went, he said you will never consider yourself a grasshopper. Wherever I've been. And that is why God has allowed me to be elevated wherever I've been. It's not because I was that good. Ah, there were better people out there. The reason I got elevated and promoted was there was no grasshopper mentality here. I'm not jumping all over. Uh, 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 uh. I see giants. I can see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But greater is he. That is in me. The same God that called me to this boardroom is the same God that will make me shut the mouths of the giants. If you brought me this far, Lord, you will sort it out from this day forward. I did not get to where I am on my own, and I certainly will not go further without him. Keep God with you. The Bible says, grasshopper mentality here, but a Caleb. Ha! He told him, keep quiet. And you know what he says? Let us go up at once. Mm. He doesn't say tomorrow. He says, let's go now. Let's go at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. I came to tell you here today, as Caleb would tell you, I came to tell you, let us go up today. Let us go up at once. Not a moment of procrastination. Procrastination is going to keep you in a wilderness for 40 years. Let's go up at once, for we are well able. We are well able. We are well able to overcome it. Now let me remind you, we are more than, oh, we are more than, and how do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You call yourself a grasshopper? The blood of the Lamb seals grasshopper. I see a giant, but greater is he that is in me. The word of God seals that. The blood of the Lamb seals that. How do you overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So if you see yourself as a grasshopper, ah, but Caleb is saying, ah, we're going to go and we'll take possession. We're going to go and we're going to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. The challenge is, right? The Bible says, verse number 31, but the men who had gone up with him said, you have to separate yourself from those that can't go with you. There are certain people that you should never take with you. The problem here is we have a Caleb. How many of you know that God would have just taken Caleb and Joshua and wiped out that old city? How many of you know that? This is the God we serve. God's not dependent on the numbers you are carrying. But the problem is we feel we need the numbers. And so the Bible says the men who had gone with them said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. You know how many times we will prophesy in this house, and as you leave the church, some negative person will speak against what God has already promised you. How many times have you received a promise from God here on a Sunday morning? And just as you get home, ah, 
Why are you lifting your hands in church today? You. You. Same man. Hmm. Watch out for those that would speak against what God will do. It will even cripple you for 40 years. Not because God didn't want to do it. And not because God is not too powerful to do it. Or, or he's weak. No. It's because of you you've surrounded yourself with. That's going to keep you in the wrong place. That's why I am quite able to shake out those that don't belong. If you if you got to be careful when you go to spy. If you're taking those that I spy with my eye, uh-uh, stay at home. I've got to spy with what I hear God say. We're not here to spy with my eye. I spy with what I hear God say to me. You got to change that game. I know we got trained as children. Play the game, baby. I spy with my little eyes something beginning with M. Milk. And H, honey. F, fruit. And then G, giants. Another G, grasshoppers. I've got to hear the word of God and hear what it's saying for my life. Can you hear what the word of God is saying? Can you silence these negative people in your life? Because you know that even a strong person can anchor in the wilderness for 40 years because of what you said. Because go and study scripture and see what happens to the strong Caleb and the strong Joshua. They have to anchor in the wilderness for 40 years. They've got to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. Hmm. You know, mindsets are very challenging to break. The devil makes you sleepy. So we can't break that bad mindset you got. I pray that every slumbering spirit leaves your life right now. But the men who had gone up with him said, I don't care how much of scripture they say they know. I don't care how much longer they might have been serving God than you have. But let me tell you, if God told you and somebody else is saying something else, move away. Move away. Let me remind you, even Eli saw this woman drunk. But she wasn't. Don't allow... The fact that you feel, I don't have the experience. I need to listen to those that experience. I know there's a time and a place for experience. Trust me. But it's not the time and the place for experience when you've got a God that has opened up the ocean for you to cross over on dry ground. Have you ever experienced that? No? Well, guess what? Experience is not going to cut it. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse number 9. Turn there. Are you ready? Because watch this. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you Go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you. So it doesn't matter what the economy is doing. So it doesn't matter how many businesses are busy closing. It doesn't matter that your job is under threat. It doesn't matter. Because has he not commanded you? What has he commanded you? Be and why? Because you saw a giant? No. Because you got giants among you that are fighting for you? No. Be strong. Be of good courage. For the Lord your God is with you. And he has not brought you this far for you to fail now. 
problem was that these guys, they got a grasshopper in them. And you know what a grasshopper in your mind can do? It can push out the God in you. A grasshopper in your head can push out the God in you. I don't care about your surname. I don't care about who your father is, your mother is. I came to tell you, this is a command from God. He is commanding you like he commanded Joshua. I have commanded you, says the Lord, be strong. Be courageous. There are some versions that say, be bold, be strong. Don't be scared. Don't be a pushover. Don't be, when, when your friends are scared, they're saying, hey, now you check the interest rate is gone up. Now you check fuel is gone up. Now you check this, check that, check, hey, be strong. I don't want to hear our business people saying, yeah, you see my skin color, it's not the right color, my friend. Yeah, if we don't bribe, there's no bribe that's more powerful than God. If you want to talk about a bribe, he paid the price already. There is no further price to pay. Be strong. Be courageous. As you are moving into the last portion of this year, we are on that, you, you know, you, the, the car is coasting now. Yeah, we're coasting into the end of the year. As you coast into the end of the year, I want you to be Strong. Be courageous. Don't walk around like a grasshopper. You have seen the milk and honey, and you have seen the fruitfulness, and that is all yours. Do not allow even the negative opinions. Sometimes the worst thing you can have, the worst thing, is a father or a mother that has lived their own lives under a shell. Never took any chances in life. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The Bible says, I, I, I was talking to you guys about this last week, the book of Luke chapter 137. This is what it says. For with God, nothing will be impossible. For with God, in case you thought this is an Old Testament thing, for with God, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is. Okay, so with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing will be impossible. I'm saying to you, Harbalites, I'm not preaching something that is dead. I, I don't speak about things that I have not experienced myself, that my wife has not experienced, that my children have not experienced themselves, that my parents have not experienced. I draw from an experience that the Word has sent into our ears. And we walk by faith. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord, your God, is with you. And with God, nothing will 